Hello there, my name is Dr. James Vilsack, and today I'm going to present my session, Make It Stick, Percussion Tools for the Classroom. I want to talk about how to utilize the percussion instruments in Finale and really maximize effectiveness. I want to talk about how to customize the scores, create a clean score even faster, including how to switch between pitched and non-pitched instruments in a couple different ways. Before I get started, I just want to talk about some of the tools that I use whenever I'm working with Finale. I'm going to be using my MacBook Pro with Finale version 27 on it, as well as just a MIDI keyboard. Mine has some bells and whistles, but I think any MIDI keyboard is really a great benefit whenever working uh, with really any music software on a computer. So if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, I highly recommend uh, looking into one at your local music store. To get started, I just pulled up a really quick symphonic band template from the templates already provided with Finale. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll to the bottom. This template already has three percussion parts for us, as well as timpani. What we're going to want to start with is the score manager. So I go to the top and click on window and just come down here to score manager. This is where we learn basically how Finale is thinking about percussion right now. We can see that there are three percussion parts currently loaded as basic orchestral percussion. That's currently the sounds and the maps we have loaded. Um, so what that means is that many of the common band instruments that we would find, or orchestral instruments, uh, are already loaded. So we have bass drum already on the bottom. We got crash cymbals, gongs, snare drum in the correct spot. We have triangle suspended cymbal. And that is really helpful that we already can get started, but we're gonna actually learn how to customize all of those to our needs. So as I look at the score manager, I can obviously what, see what instruments I have. I can control what order they're gonna show up. I can see what audio device is being used for playback. So for example, I have the virtual drumline add-on pack, so I could come down here to select contact five for that. But we're gonna stick with Garretton for now. Here I can select what sounds that I want and then I use Customize View to see the percussion MIDI maps. The most important thing is that whatever the MIDI map here is lines up with the sound you have selected. There can be some issues if those are not the same, so it's always a good thing to double check if you're having some issues. Another very important thing to notice on the screen is what's called notation style, and that's right down here. All right, for most normal instruments that are displayed in a treble clef or a bass clef, they're gonna be displayed with standard notation. That's exactly what we all see. It's what's on the mugs and the stores. I don't really see any percussion staffs on mugs and stores, but for uh, percussion instruments, they're gonna to need to be listed as a percussion notation style. That's because we don't necessarily use pitches for our instruments and we all have different lines for everything. So we wanna make sure that we have the proper notation right there in notation style for the percussion instruments. It's gonna be very important when we switch between pitched and non-pitched instruments that we have that differentiation. Now that we've gotten all that covered, let's say that I'm coming over here and I want snare drum on a different line or say I want the triangle to look like a triangle instead of an X. So that is where what's called percussion maps will come in. So I'm gonna make sure I have the instrument I want to adjust selected. In this case, it'll be percussion one. I'm gonna come over here to notation style and select settings. And here you can see percussion layout selection. And I'm gonna to go to edit. It's already selected our basic orchestral percussion. And this is where you can design your own custom percussion maps. So I can look up and down and see what all instruments are in this map already. So I wanted to change the triangle so I can see here that there is an open and a mute sound, which is great because both of them are utilized quite often, but I want them to look like triangles. So when I click on the triangle open sound, I can come over here on the right and staff position allows me to drag up or down where on the staff I'd want to see that. So let's say I want that on the E line, which the number for staff position automatically changes. If you know the number, you can enter that in manually. And then each of these boxes correlates with one of the sounds. So for closed note head, I'm going to come here and I'm going to click select. And you have all these options. So I'm going to go and find the triangle go with 49. Also note, there's a little shortcut there for one. And now every time that I have a 
uh, closed note triangle, it will show up as a, uh, well, triangle. So I like to have the open triangles for the other note lengths, and I happen to know that those are exclamation points, which is actually just a shift above one. So that's a really nice, quick and easy change. So I can come here, say nine, one, just press the tab here in between these. And I can see that all of those are changed. Press select. And now, whenever I come down here to percussion one, and I want a triangle note, it will go ahead and be in the shape of triangles. Now, let's go back to that menu and let's see what else we can do. Let's say I'm writing a piece and I don't need any gongs. Well, I can press the gong and then come down here, press the minus button, and that will actually take the gong out. Sometimes you need to press up and down, but you can see over here that is disappearing. So let's just say, for example, I only wanted triangle and snare drum. For, you know, some reason, that's what's on the piece. So I'm just going to keep pressing minus here on all these sounds. We'll leave the snare roll in. There we go. I've got snare drum and triangle. Those are the only options I have left. So I'm going to press OK, select. And now, as I'm coming here and going up and down, scrolling through options, it is only going to go through those options that I had remaining. So if you need to make a very quick part for someone and you want to only write for snare drum or a limited instruments and you don't want to have to scroll through all of the options that come with the template, that is a way you can actually limit options and help you write even faster. So a couple other things that I can do here in percussion maps, let's say that I made a mistake. And let's say I do in fact want a crash cymbal note. So what I can do is I can come down here to the plus sign and that will give us a blank slot come over here to note definition and note type, find symbols, solo crash symbols, and then I can just choose what sound I want to fill in there. Let's say I want crash symbols right here in the middle, just above the bass drums, and I want them to be an X, which I like. Just pressing X is the shortcut. For X's, if I want a thicker X, I like to use a lowercase Z. I think that looks good, so I'll go ahead and press OK. And now that is part of the map. Now there's a few other cool things we can do. We can create our own percussion maps by coming to this menu and hitting create. You're gonna need to have a map to base it off of. So I'm gonna come up here and choose the map. Let's say I wanna base this one on percussion toys layout. So I'll press okay and then add all. And that will simply add all of the sounds in that map. And here I will need to manually go and customize all of them for whatever setup that I want it to be. Now that we know about percussion maps, let's talk about switching instruments. It's definitely a very common thing for percussionists to do, and it is very possible to have multiple instruments on a single part, including those that aren't on the same template as we saw earlier. There's a lot of instruments already provided. So I'm gonna start by taking the percussion two part, and I want it to be a marimba part. So I'm gonna go under here to sound, and this is without having to create a new instrument. I'm just gonna change percussion two to marimba. I'm gonna to come to sound, percussion, select, marimba, and then we should be all set. Except that I'm still getting crash cymbal and snare drum sounds. And that is because we have to go back to the notation styles that were mentioned earlier. We need to make sure that marimba is of a standard notation style. And then as one final thing, we wanna make sure that the first clef is in fact a treble clef and not a percussion clef. I can also change that using the clef tool up here. So now that I have that, we have told what sound to play, we have told the style, we should have a marimba. Perfect. So that's one way without having to change parts, I can switch instruments. Now let's say in the same part, I want to have a vibraphone. So, one of my favorite ways of changing sounds is through the layer system. So if I go into the score manager here and select the down arrow under name, it will actually show us four layers. Each part has four layers. So I'm gonna go to layer two and I'm gonna select vibraphone. 
And now in this part for percussion two, any time that I'm playing anything from layer two, it will have a vibraphone sound instead of a marimba sound. So I can show that here. Just play some notes on my MIDI keyboard. I'm gonna to come to the bottom left and switch to layer two. And that's not just for when I'm on my MIDI keyboard, that also is whenever I have notes. So I'm just gonna highlight these two measures real quick. Right click, move and copy layers from percussion one into percussion two. And now we should have two measures of marimba and two measures of vibraphone. Get rid of those triangle notes. The layers tool works really well for switching between melodic instruments. One thing to be careful about when using layers is to watch out for transposing instruments, such as the glockenspiel. If I were to take notes, assign glockenspiel to layer three, and put them in that same octave, because we're still on the marimba staff, the computer's not gonna have any playback because it is already doing the transpositions. So if I try to play that back here with the vibraphone, you can hear that, but it's silent. Where the sound is actually is two octaves up, where that transposition is. So you just need to be aware of that. You can either use the other method we're gonna talk about to switch instruments, or in this particular case, same case with Critali's, I can use 15 VA. That'll bring it up two octaves without changing the notation, and then I can just double click, uncheck that show, and it will not show up on a part. Now, I can also switch to non-pitch percussion instruments using layers. So we're gonna try this in layer four. We're gonna switch back to just basic orchestral percussion. Now, as we remember, percussion needs to be with the percussion notation, but if I try to switch it for layer four, it's going to switch all of them. You can see all the notes just turned yellow. That just turned all four layers into percussion notation. So one thing to be aware of, you can't switch in the same part using layers. So I'm gonna switch back, back to standard. Now here in layer four, which we assign to basic orchestral percussion, the MIDI map is the same. The sounds are still there. They're still playing. We can absolutely write it. They're just gonna look a little skewed. So if you can either get across that using alternative notation, or if you just get lucky, uh, that works. Or if you're just creating a playback file, then that's not really a problem. One other thing to note about layers that can help make parts really easy is that whenever you are mixing layers, for example, layer one and layer two in the same part, Layer one will always be assigned to stems up, and layer two will always be assigned stems down. So if I want a snare and bass drum on the same part, then I can put snare drum as layer one, stems will always point up. Bass drum is layer two, stems always point down. It's gonna create a really clean score really fast. That's also super convenient when creating drum set parts so that I can put the bass drum, uh, then the snare drum, the hi-hat on different lines. The other main way to switch instruments in Finale is to use the utilities change instrument command. So going after the marimba vibe glockenspiel part, let's say that I want cowbell for about four bars. I'm gonna highlight those four bars. I'm gonna come up here to utilities and change instruments. Here I get a window where I can select what instrument. I'm gonna choose accessories. And what we can do in the window manager you have your four layers, but what has shown up underneath that is a new instrument here. The accessory is still under percussion two. Now, that, since I used utilities, you can see the staff changed automatically to a percussion staff. It changes automatically back to a treble clef after these four bars. What's great about this is accessories can have a percussion notation style while in the same staff as those other parts. So I can come in here, I can adjust, I can make the cowbell a big old X. 
Oops, use the capital, capital one, put the circle around it. I can come in here and now enter the cowbell. We're just gonna enter chord notes for now. And then as I get out of it, it automatically goes back to marimba and layer one. And that is how we can utilize the change instruments to have different percussion styles in one part. Now that we've covered switching instruments, uh, let's talk about some things that can help make your music look really good and help it get there even faster. To help with that, I pulled up the short little snare drum duo that I wrote a while back just to demonstrate these points. As you can see, I've already utilized layers one and two here for the purposes of playback. Um, the snare sound I was using did not have a stick click and those little X's signify a stick click. So one of the first things is how would a student know that's a stick click? You're gonna have to include a lot of labelings with percussion and one of the easiest ways for me to do this is through the expressions tool, which is the mezzo forte up here. I'm gonna double click on that note and I'm gonna go to miscellaneous and just type create my own, just say stick click and I can adjust the font however I want and I can assign that. The reason I like the expressions tools is because that labeling is now assigned to that specific note so that as I can move this music around or do whatever I need to with it, that labeling is gonna stay with that note compared to if I use the text tool to type stick click and I put it right there. Let's put it on snare drum two, but you know, let's say we move around. The word stick click has not moved. So I like the expressions tool. I use that not only to label sounds, but whenever instruments get switched or I want students to switch mallets, I will use the miscellaneous expression to be able to get that in there. Now, a few other things to help reduce clutter. I wanna actually create this as a one line percussion staff. And that is something I can do in the score manager. I'll just click on the instruments and down here, Above first clef, I can select one line with full bar line and I can get that. That looks really nice. And now what's really apparent is all the stems are facing down. A lot of music for percussion, for example, a lot of snare drum music, especially in settings such as marching band, uh, you're gonna want the stems up. So without having to manually change all of them, I can go to staff settings, which is this tool right here. Click anywhere on the line. I'm gonna go over here to stem settings always up. And now all of the notes are gonna look up. I'm gonna need to repeat all of this on the snare drum two line. Select snare drum two. And that has helped clean up immensely. Now, with the stems up, I'm gonna need to readjust the stick click. I highly recommend that you get these settings done as soon as possible so you can avoid uh, edits towards the end of the process. Couple other things that are missing here. I wanna put some accents on these eighth note, 16th note combination rhythms. And so an accent is a very, very common articulation in percussion music uh, as our any articulations, I can click on the note and select accent, which is right over here, but take note of the little A there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press A on my keyboard and then click on the note. As long as I'm in the articulation tool, that's just gonna add an accent immediately. I can just go down the line and add the accents where I need them. Now, if I have a bunch of accents in a row, let's just say these two eighth notes, I can actually hold A, drag, Let's try that one more time. Drag, and it will add accents everywhere you got uh, highlighted, even places you maybe didn't mean to highlight. So that is a really easy way to get articulations in. Now, let's say I wanted to create a buzz roll. So uh, I'm going to just generically add a buzz right here. So I'm gonna come here, find the little Z, but the Z doesn't have a shortcut. So what I'm gonna do with the articulation articulation tool, I'm gonna to press the space bar, and then I'm gonna press the key that I want to create the shortcut. So since I'm using a buzz roll, which has a little Z, I'm gonna use the Z button. So I'm gonna press Shift Z. And then I can come down here and select 
that from the articulation window, and that actually creates a shortcut, a custom shortcut on that. So now whenever I press C, I can now create the little articulations. One last really important detail in percussion music is lyrics tool for stickings. Stickings basically determine whether you're going to play with the right or the left hand. And if you don't give that to your students, uh, help them select it. They'll often have to choose it themselves. By writing stickings in the music, you can also provide students the best method to uh, play and stick through their music. The easiest way to do that is not through expressions, but this time we're going to use the lyrics tool. And so I can just click on the note I want and just simply type the stickings. My R and L buttons have seen a lot of use through typing stickings. Grace note there wants on sticking. But again, the reason why that works is because the lyrics will automatically tag onto the notes already written. They will stay there when I go up and down. But if I were to try to do that with expressions, I'd have to click, select, click, select. Instead of using the lyrics tool, I just type and press the space bar to switch to a new note, which makes it really quick and really easy. Similar issues with the text tool if you're trying to do stickings, uh, where they will not move with the music, but there's also the problem of getting them to line up properly. The lyrics tool makes that very fast and very easy. I hope that these tools can really help demystify some of the concerns that you may have over percussion and finale, and I really hope that you enjoy the rest of this virtual summit. Have a great day. Yeah.